Moo! Uh, this movie will do nothing to cure you of your fear of flying. <laughs> uh, so this is a fascinating one in that um, it's one of those movies that's good and clues you in on a very interesting piece of history, um, but it's not quite as good as you'd like it to be. You know, and a lot of that is just kind of in the directing of it and the, and the choice of writing. Um, so, uh, so this film, if you haven't, if you haven't been keeping up on the trailers, boy, trying to get out of here is going to be somewhat lethal. <laughs> it's like synchronized swimming. All these cars are pulling out all over the place. Um, so anyway... This film is about a, a hijacking of a French uh, plane in 1976 by a, kind of a ragtag group of terrorists. You know, some of them, you know, Palestinian, some of them, you know, German, some of them, you know, just all these different ideological this, that, and the other thing. Somebody did somebody wrong. And now the only way we can deal with it is to, you know, terrorize a bunch of people, you know. But there's a bunch of nut jobs, in my opinion. But anyway, um, and they take this the plane to Uganda and hold up in an abandoned terminal for like seven days until the Israeli government sends a strike team in to basically take the, uh, take the terrorists out and save the hostages. Um, the film is very much a procedural thing, um, meaning that it's more interested in kind of the nuts and bolts of this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, um, than real, it's all, it almost kind of wants to be a reenactment of a documentary with, you know, certain characters it even says at the beginning of the film, and I really, I, I like that the film did this. It said, you know, this, this movie is based on true events, but we created fictional characters to represent certain things. You know, I like that. You don't see a film that's based on real events usually say something like that. You know, so I like that it kind of comes right out there and uh, says it. So, the strength of this film is that the procedural stuff is interesting, kind of the, you know, how this happened, this happened, this happened, all that, is is pretty interesting. The downside is it doesn't really give you specific characters to uh, to follow and to kind of latch on to and kind of view it through their specific eyes. It does in certain cases, but... Uh, so, like, you know, the, the film this most reminds me of, of course, you know, it happened around the same time, was Argo. You know, but whereas that film had the Ben Affleck character as kind of our our audience POV, the person we're following, and, yeah, you, know, you see the periphery characters, but whereas we kind of got to see the procedure through his eyes, now we're seeing it through a bunch of different eyes. Um... You know, while this is going on, there's this kind of dick measuring contest with the, you know, the Prime Minister of Israel and his Secretary of Defense because the Prime Minister wants to negotiate and the Secretary doesn't because, you know, he can't negotiate with terrorists and all this stuff. Um, they introduce us to one of the, uh, the Israeli soldiers who's going to go in and help save the hostages, him and his ballerina girlfriend, which is a plot thread that take that makes no freaking sense and doesn't fit in the story you know we didn't need to know this guy <laughs> you know we don't know him i don't even know what his name is you know they said he has a red-haired dancer who they keep intercutting the story as it gets later on with her dance rehearsals and i don't know what dance they're doing but it's some dance where she where like all the dancers are in like a semicircle and they all stand up in chairs and sit back down almost like they're doing the wave but every time it comes to her she like falls flat on her face and they do this repeatedly i assume it's part of the dance but the first couple times you're watching it i'm like is she supposed to be falling over you know um anyway so, so yeah if that sounded out of place in the review it feels very out of place in the movie I think it's just there because the director really wanted this kind of juxtaposition of shots between the ballet dancers rehearsing their dance and the soldiers rehearsing to go save the hostages and then the performance 
of the dance and the intensity of it with the intensity of going and saving the hostages. Um, but it really doesn't amount to much. And like I say, the problem we have is that none of these characters you really connect with in any way, you know, there's not an emotional journey going on. The closest there comes to an emotional journey is two of our main characters are two of the, the German terrorists as played by Rosamund Pike and that really good actor who played Baron Zemo in Captain America Civil War, whose name I can never remember. So I'm just going to call him Zemo. Um, so Zemo is a, you know, a German radical. He's a book publisher. So he's one of these guys that has heard about all these revolutions in books and shit, but hasn't really done it. And Roseman Pike's character is this, you know, I'm not really sure what, but she's some kind of terrorist or freedom fighter or whatever they want to call themselves. Um, who is steadily going more and more, you know, I don't want to say mad, but she's losing her grip a little bit more and more as the story goes on. There's also, um, the only other close thing we get to a, to a character is the engineer on the plane who kind of represents all the hostages. You know, he gets to have the kind of the, the scene with Baron Zemo, which was actually one of the better scenes in the movie. Um, so this movie is good in that it's really interesting and you know gives a, one of the things I really love about this movie. Let me let me get that out of the way first. So aside from this the procedural and the the interest of kind of how this all went down and what all happened and whatnot and what have you, I like that this is not a America movie. And I mean that on two fronts. You know, for instance, again, I'll compare it to Argo. Argo was very much our story, how the CIA did this. This, America has nothing to do with this movie. You know, there's no American characters. There's no, you know, America doesn't swing in and save the day. This is a foreign film. Not, it's not so much a foreign film, but it's a foreign issue. And we saw how another government handled things. Okay. We saw, and I, what I also liked about this, so not only was it awesome to kind of see, you know, another government and other people take center stage and be the heroes, it was also nice for a change to not have it be a problem that we didn't somehow cause or were responsible for. You know? Uh, it's, it was nice, you know, again, Argo, it's great that it was, you know, the CIA kind of went in there and, and did this. But, as they say in the beginning of it was kind of an issue that we kind of started. You know, or we had a hand in. It wasn't a blameless thing. So, it's nice to see one where, hey, not only are we not the heroes, but we're not getting any of the blame. You know, so that was, you know, that was uh, a nice change of pace. So, anyway. Um, so, it's good in all of those aspects. But, I don't know. It, 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 the pacing of it was very, very slow. And I think that was trying to give the audience kind of a uh, a uh, feeling of you know what it probably was like for everybody involved, just this kind of ticking clock and just how tense it was. Um, and it was good from that. I like the kind of almost documentary style feel to it. The only problem, again, is that going with that style. It, uh, it doesn't lend itself to engagement. Like, you can't get engaged with the story or the characters or the plight. Everybody plays their characters so very close to the vest and so, I want to say deadpan. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of emoting in this movie, which emoting may not be natural, but it's interesting to watch. You know, the characters are all very kind of deadpan stare, very soft voices, very... There's not a lot of inflection to their voices. You know, it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of acting going on. And I don't mean that in terms of the acting is bad. I think uh, Roseman Pike, who I've reviewed several of her movies for the show, is always good. You know, as this woman who's very slowly kind of losing her grip on everything. And Zemo does an excellent job in, uh, in his role, too as this guy who, you know, has done a lot of book learning and has learned about a lot about revolutions from books, but, you know, has never really, you know, done it. There's a really, one of the best scenes in the movie is this moment where one of the, I, I, I can't remember if he was a Palestinian or, I believe he's a Palestinian, 
Uh, but one of the one of the other terrorists like chews Zemo out, going, you know, why are you here? You're you're rich. You have a business. You know, you're not poor. You're not. We're doing this because we feel we don't have another choice. You know, you know, you created this problem because what your people did to the Jews, they then came to Palestine and did to us. It's twisted logic. Because, you know, clearly, sorry, but the second you resort to terrorism, I don't care what your reasoning are, is you're pretty much in the fucking wrong. You know, so a government does you wrong and you take it out on other innocent people and that somehow makes you right? Fuck you. You know, so it's twisted psychology, but I like that it's it's this guy who's, um, you know, again, he's, he's, like a, he's an academic and he, you know, he... Uh, and like I say, he, he, he's done a lot of book learning, but doesn't really know what it's like in, you know, you know, in the field and all that. Kind of getting smacked down by somebody who, you know, right or wrong, he's wrong, let's just get that, you know, feels like they have to do this for their family or, you know, because, you know, for whatever reason, as opposed to somebody who just sits around going, oh, socialists and fascists and uh, everything I disagree with is wrong. I'm going to go be a snot about it. You know, someone, you know, it's, it's kind of equivalent to grabbing some of those, uh, those grunge rockers from the 90s who like to, who are all from upper middle class families and were doing all these songs about how much life sucks. It's kind of the equivalent of someone grabbing them, smacking them and taking them down to a, you know, a third world country or something and having them live there for a month and going, now, now you have something to bitch about. You know, so uh, it was a good. That was a that was a very good scene. Um, but yeah, I think that's the main problem I have with the film. Again, film is good. Film is very good. Um, but there's no characters to really latch onto and follow their story and understand. You know what is going on. They try to give you things from the terrorist point of view, kind of more from anybody else's. We see a lot of scenes kind of flashback to them kind of getting together and planning this and training and why they're doing it and all this stuff. Um, but, again, you don't sympathize with the terrorists. You shouldn't sympathize with the terrorists. Um, we don't really get to know any of the passengers. We know them kind of just by, oh, there's that guy, there's, you know, there's the family with the two kids... You know, and all this, you know, stuff. But again, we don't really know them. We don't, you know, it's... It, the whole film seems very alienated from its audience. And I think, again, that's probably by design. Because they want this to be more of a, this is just what happened. It's not meant to have you do a whole, you know, moralistic, you know, was it right, was it wrong, blah, blah, blah. It's just kind of there to go, this is how this went down these are the decisions that led to it on both sides and probably the reason they didn't get into a lot of the uh, the passengers you know or the hostages was probably just because then you know here are here's a thinking that went down on both sides and here are the poor schmucks kind of just stuck in the middle who were just kind of minding their own business they were just trying to fly from one place to another so um, so in all this the movie does a good job and the movie is watchable and good it's just It sounds dumb to say, but it's like I, I don't see a lot of rewatch value. There's a guy with a really small penis, like right next to me. You hear, you hear his car? Hear that? Small penis. <laughs> he is really trying to, boy. Oh man. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Anyway, um, there's no real rewatch value in this. You know, again, I'm sorry to keep comparing it, but it's the only thing I can think of. You know, Argo, I can rewatch Argo a hundred times. I love Argo. It's a great movie. You know, and again, procedural, but characters that we care about and whatnot. It's, it's more of a movie as opposed to kind of a reenactment of a documentary. Um, so I'm glad I saw it. It's definitely a good movie. I just don't know if I'll ever watch it again. Because there's nothing to make me go back and go, okay, I want to rewatch this for this performance or this moment. And, I mean, that's neither here, that's neither good nor bad. You know, again, 
uh, I get the distinct impression the film is just trying to be a procedural of just kind of telling us what happened and not really wanting us to connect with things. Uh, you can tell that by, you know, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm giving spoilers away here, so, but, you know, just in case, spoilers. You know, you can tell that by at the very end when the, uh, uh, when the Israelis, uh, storm the, uh, the, the airport and they kill Roseman Pike and Baron Zemo, it, their deaths aren't done in any kind of big, grand kind of way. You know how, I mean, you all know what I'm talking about. When you watch a movie and the main character dies, it's usually this big slow-mo and you see them and their eyes go wide and they lay there and they're gasping. They're like, there wasn't that. It's like, boom, boom, dead. You know? And the most we get is that, you know, at the end, the camera kind of pans over both of them and kind of hangs on Roseman Pike for a little while. Um, but you can tell that, uh, again, just from that scene, you can tell this, the director and the filmmakers did not want this to be a, I relate to this piece. They wanted it to just be a, this is kind of what happened piece. So, so I think it was good. Um, but I, it's one of those films that I kind of get, this is one of the reasons I have kind of, for, you know, freaking out when I do a rating system because... It's hard to rate this movie because it's good, but I wasn't really engaged for a lot of it, um, and that, so that's kind of a mark against it. But it's it's not bad. It's not unwatchable. It's not horrific. It's not any of the things I've been subjected to for the majority of 2018 so far. So uh, let's see here. You know, I'm gonna. I've been kind of stuck on one letter for a little while, but I'm going to stay there, I think, for this one. So, uh, final grade for seven days in a Dibby, I, I give it a B plus. Um, I think if it had, had, like I say, if it... I'm a broken record here, but... You know, if for the film it was and the choices it made, it fulfilled them and did it very well. But for me, just, you know, as a, as a moviegoer... I wanted a little bit more to keep me keep me interested and keep me engaged and maybe it wouldn't have felt like it dragged so much. So, you know, I think if it had that, it could have been an A, but I, it didn't. So I got to I gotta take it down to a B plus. I think it, it did what it did very well and told the story it wanted to tell very well. Um, I think Roseman Pike, I said this again, I said this numerous times, is one of those underrated actors out there. She's... Even if I haven't liked the movie she's in, you know, like Hostels, um, I've never not liked her performance. She's always been a very good actor and a very and a very gritty and kind of natural actor, especially in these later years. Um, I give and I gotta give big ups to kind of the whole cast. A lot of cast people I've never heard of, you know, or didn't recognize. So in that they did a they did an excellent job, but. Uh, but yeah, history buffs and kind of people you know, who enjoy that type of film, I think you'll you'll like this. Maybe you'll get a little bit more out of it than I did. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's a pretty decent film. So thus ends spring break at the movies. Yes, Monday I return to work. And we march, we're marching down to the end of the school year, folks. I'm, you know, everyone's excited. Um, the, the film landscape, as I look through the coming attractions, is not looking great. So we're going to have to, in some cases, we're going to have to scrape and claw to find ourselves something to, something to look at here. So here's hoping there are some diamonds in the rough, and here's hoping some of these big budget things don't look, don't turn out to be as bad as they look. <laughs> um... So, until next time, thank you again for joining me, uh, and uh, for Chewy, Mr. Chirpy, and myself, drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.